would like to share a video memorial of my husband and the father of my two sons, Eric Nelson. Um, he was my husband and my best friend and he passed away on April 16th of this year, very suddenly and unexpected. He was very much the devoted husband, a great musician, a great artist, and I was his biggest fan. And I will always love him. And I will always remember him and cherish every memory we have until the day I die. I want to thank all my friends and family who reached out in difficult times to support me, to send me flowers, to send me food, to send me money. I thank all of you. I know that you loved him and cared for him because he was such an honorable human being and he loved everyone. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. sister Laura and um, I just wanted to share a little bit about um, kind of Eric the early years <laughs> um, he was born in Des Moines Iowa in 1956 um, to Harry and Jordina Nelson um, so we grew up in Iowa um, we had a great childhood um, uh, we there were three of us kids Eric was the oldest and our sister Luann was two years younger than Eric. And then I was four years younger than Luann, so six years younger than Eric. Um, and I just remember growing up with him, I always, I just always thought he was so cool. He was, he was cool. He was a cool guy. <laughs> he was cool. I just remember there was a, always a lot of love and joy in our house. <laughs> it was great. There was also a lot of music in our house. Um, our dad was a drummer. He had been, um, he had played in bands since he was like 16 or so. He played in big bands and I know he played in a lot of jazz bands and jazz trios. Um, his drum set was always set up in the house. Um, so you'd hear him practicing and playing at different times. Um, and there was always jazz music playing in our house. Um, well, almost always until Eric got his own uh, record player which I think he was only nine or 10. He got a record player and his, I'm pretty sure his first album was the Beatles. <laughs> so we, there was a lot of Beatles playing in the house after that. Um, and I think that was when he started dreaming of becoming a rock star. So along with being a, a talented musician, Eric was also a talented artist. Um, he did some beautiful pen and ink drawings um, that also hung in our house. <laughs> and, um, but, uh, but I got to thinking about it when I was preparing for this and I realized that the time that he was doing these beautiful, I mean, beautiful, intricate pen and ink drawings, big, large, large ones, um, was actually the time our family had moved from Fargo back to Iowa. We were living in Cedar Falls. Um, it was the end of Eric's junior year. He had to start his senior year at a new school. 
you know, didn't know anybody, you know, had had to leave his band. And so I think it was, the, that was a hard, hard time for him. I mean, it had to be, I'm sure it was a hard time for him. And, but then I realized that looking through that art that, that he was creating all this beautiful art in that time. Um, and just, I don't know, it just hit me that how even in a, this, that hard time he was creating beauty. And it was just, I don't know, which is so Eric. <sighs> I also saw how the details and um, really fine details and intricacy of those pen and ink drawings really showed um, what a patient and gentle soul he is. <laughs>
My father went on to record six albums with Nick Gilder, um, touring the world, performing on national TV shows like Johnny Carson, Midnight Special, American Bandstand. And um, my father also performed with many other artists on their albums, um, such as Kim Carnes and her Romance Dance album. That was a big artist. And um, also Susan Lynch. Um, he also performed on Paul Stanley's solo album from KISS, which is just amazing. My father continued working on music his entire life. Um, always, I remember as a kid watching him always songwriting, playing bass um, on tracks and just working and working on new projects, um, especially with friends and other musicians that he had you know, made along his career and doing solo projects. And he continued on continued to this day um, that he passed, that he was still working on projects and still working on songs. And um, it's just beautiful to see that, you know, that as an artist, it was truly his passion from, from teenager till all the way through his adult years. And it was just so inspiring. It was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to have a brother who was uh, a rock star. <laughs> um, and anytime they were touring, within driving range from Cedar Falls, we were there. So that was, that was fun. We got to see him, see him play um, live quite a bit. Um, and I just remember too thinking that, wow, my brother's a rock star, you know, but yet it was still, he was still Eric. <laughs> he was still a gentle, humble, funny, silly Eric. So <laughs> I am thankful that he was my brother. I uh, consider it a great privilege and a great pleasure to have um, grown up with him. Um, uh, yeah, he will be missed. He will be missed. I met Eric Nelson in 1976. I was working at a supper club and he was coming through with a band and he came in wearing a long jet black leather coat carrying his face and uh, it was love at first sight for me. I thought he was just the cat's meow and he made me nervous every time we walked by and we started talking and uh, we started getting together. He was in town for two weeks <laughs> And when it was time for him to leave, he had to go back to Dallas, which was about three hours away. He went back and then he drove back to tell me how much he loved me. And then we had a long distance relationship and he moved to LA and I followed shortly. So when I found out he was younger than me, he was only by three and a half years. But we lived together for a year because I wanted him to make sure that he was ready to become a father of a three-year-old and a husband. So, and yes, he wanted all of that. And we were best friends for 44 years. And he was the best man I ever met in my life. I love him.
Eric Nelson is my dad. Eric came into my life at exactly the moment I needed a father and a dad. I was four years old. I remember my mom would be at work and my dad would be watching me for the day. So I got to tag along to his practices and recording sessions. We spent a lot of time together those first few years and I remember having lots of fun and laughs as a child. I was just so happy to get to hang out with my dad every day. A few years later, my mom and dad had my brother John, and soon after, Eric's parents, Harry and Jerry, and his two sisters, Luann and Laura, moved out to Southern California, and my family was complete. They were such a loving, kind, artistic, creative, and musically inclined family, and this, of course, had a huge impact on me as a child growing up. My dad was an exceptional musician, artist, highly intelligent, kind, gentle, and very patient. He encouraged me to explore music and art as a child. He introduced me to music from a musician's perspective. When I was seven years old, one of the first records I remember him loaning me was The Beatles' A Hard Day's Night. I played that record repeatedly on my Mickey Mouse record player. On my eighth birthday, my grandfather gave me his vintage 60s Ludwig drum set from his days as a jazz drummer. That was it. I was hooked, and that set the course for my life. And I've been in love with music and drums ever since, and it's all traceable to a few key moments in my life with my dad. Growing up and getting the chance to be around professional musicians like himself and his best friend at the time, drummer Pat Mastelato, and also having a garage to practice in, allowed me to eventually be good enough to start playing in bands and eventually record and tour. So thanks to my dad, my grandfather Harry, and our wonderful friend Pat, I've been able to take this gift of music and travel the world and be a performer. The gift of music and art in my life has defined me as a person. These are all the things I will hopefully pass along to my children, along with teaching them kindness, patience, and giving them the love my dad gave me. These are the things I learned from my father, my dad, my inspiration in life. Eric Nelson. Hi, my name is Grace. I am Eric Nelson's daughter-in-law. And what a privilege it was to be Eric's daughter-in-law. The way that he showed his love to me with such kind and affirming words, the way that he loved his three grandchildren, it was just a really special relationship and every chance that we had to spend together to FaceTime together he always just lit up the room with his smile and laugh just his presence was always pleasant and fun to be around he was just such a wonderful man one of the things that I will always cherish and carry with me was being able to see the relationship between Carla and Eric. They loved each other in a way unlike I have seen in any other relationship of a married couple for so long. They continue to grow in their love for each other and they were so sweet and endearing. The way they affectionately touched each other, their pet names that they had for each other. It was really special and um, it was an example that really has permanently made an impact on me in a positive way because it's something that I want to reflect in my marriage and the relationships that I have. And so I'm so just thankful that I get to cherish that and pass on that legacy, pass on the legacy of loving somebody in a way that is continuously growing in a way that shows um, forgiveness and kindness and it shows just what love really is meant to be like and so I'm forever grateful to have memories to get to say that I got to spend really special and precious times with Eric that I was part of his family and most of all that I was loved by him so we miss him so much and we will always love him my dad was really just the best father and um, so humble and so loving and so caring and um, I'm going to truly miss him but just spend the rest of my life, um, you know, cherishing him and remembering him and um, being an artist, what it means to be a Nelson has uh, given me great pride and you know, he's been, he's so humble that 
I'm just learning about a lot of the stuff he did. You know, as kids, he didn't come home, brag, and talk to us about what he was working on. He would just come home and be a dad and be a father. And uh, that uh, says a lot about him. And those that knew him, family members knew that. So, love you, Dad. Watched it come undone 